I did not like Infernium the first time I played it. Hell, even after spending an hour investigating the dungeons and draining balls of energy, I found that the game was frustrating and not much fun to play. But I'm glad I stuck with it, because once I was able to get beyond my initial confusion and helplessness, I discovered a wonderfully rich and compelling adventure that is all about problem solving and discovery. Infernium is the Dark Souls and Pac-Man mashup you didn't know you wanted. This is a baffling game, by design. We're dropped into a strange and mysterious world with no information. We don't know who we are, where we are, or even what's going on. All we know is that it's somehow possible to teleport by charging up your hand and that there are these little balls of energy sitting around that are just waiting to get sucked dry. But through a combination of exploration and dying a bunch of times, we'll learn all about this unusual setting and what we're doing there. Look, I know that people are sick of hearing every challenging game compared to Dark Souls, but it's more than appropriate here. Infernium has done what a lot of the Dark Souls sequels have not, which is give me a real sense of wonder and discovery. It looks like a simple first-person dungeon crawler at the start, but the moment you stray away from the path, you'll uncover a secret world that is bigger and deeper than anything you could have imagined. It's the kind of game where you'll immediately want to compare notes with other players, especially when it comes to discovering the secrets and deciphering the cryptic story. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, because it's worth exploring what you're supposed to be doing in this strange world. In its simplest form, this is a game about running through mazes and picking up glowing orbs. This sounds easy, until you realize that there are these ghostly cloaked guards haunting the halls that'll kill you in a single hit. And you know what happens when you get killed by a ghost? You drop all those orbs you've collected and warp back to the last campfire you made. Believe it or not, it's actually worse than that. What isn't immediately clear is that you only have 25 lives to play around with before you're sucked into this pool of toxic black goo and have to start the whole thing over from the very beginning. Dying means going to something of a purgatory stage where your lives will be displayed by, you guessed it, big glowing orbs. Permadeath can be frustrating, but it's this purgatory stage where I first notice that there's more going on than meets the eye. Like I said, the deeper you dig, the more you're gonna find. Now, the reason I was initially frustrated by Infernium has a lot to do with the leisurely pace of our hero. He's not especially fast, and his teleportation dash takes a little too long to charge up. To make matters worse, sucking the energy out of those glowing balls takes a few seconds, which is time you don't always have when ghosts are chasing you. It often felt like you'd drop all of your stuff at the worst possible spas, and I kept dying trying to retrieve my orbs. I just couldn't figure out why it took so long to do everything in this game. But instead of succumbing to my frustration, I spent a lot of time exploring the surroundings and realizing that there are ways to outsmart the ghosts. And not just that, but you'll quickly realize that you don't even need to pick up every orb you see. In fact, there are strategic reasons to avoid most of the orbs you run across. The game also becomes a bit easier as you find items and upgrades, like a flashlight and the ability to teleport to greater distances. And as we keep digging, we'll discover that you don't even have to run from every enemy. In fact, there are some bad guys you'll be able to melt just by using your flashlight hand. We also uncover that there are ways to fill up those giant orbs in purgatory, meaning that you'll have more than 25 lives after all. The game has a funny way of introducing new ideas every time you think you've wrapped your head around this baffling world. Now much like Dark Souls, much of this world is connected. While the path may seem linear at first, simply straying off course a little bit will reveal shortcuts and doors that you can open that'll make navigating the castles and dungeons a lot easier. It also offers branching paths, giving us a chance to sample several types of puzzles and locations as we try to make heads or tails of this game. While I ended up loving the exploration and the discovery, there were a few things that pulled me out of this experience. One of the biggest problems is the game is incredibly frustrating, even in those moments when you know exactly what you're supposed to do. This was the case with most of the timed puzzles. Look, it's exciting to race around the maze dodging ghosts, but some of the puzzles have absolutely no margin for error. It doesn't help that the campfires are few and far between, meaning that there's a lot of backtracking involved every time you want to retry a puzzle. I also suspect that some people will be turned off by the trial and error gameplay. For the most part, I'm fine with this, since so much of the game revolves around you figuring out this unusual world. But there are certainly times when Infernium pushes things a little too far, especially when it comes to ghosts popping out of nowhere. 
And this game is purposely challenging, and you're gonna die a lot of times. So go in with the expectation that you're gonna learn something new from every attempt. Infernium was developed by Carlos Coronado, who had previously impressed with the extra trippy game Mind, Path of Thalamus. His new release feels a little more grounded, but is no less stylish. This is a good looking game with a lot of different kinds of locations to explore. It does a good job of making the various dungeons and corridors feel unique, and the scope of the world is certainly impressive. This is a developer to keep an eye on. Infernium is frustrating, confusing, aggravating, baffling, and occasionally unfair. But it's also one of the few games I've played this year that left me in awe. It's not for everybody, and it may take you a few tries before it's fun, but there's a world of discovery hidden away in the strange and hostile game. Infernium demands that you dig a little deeper. Hey, thanks for watching our review. So here's the question I have for you. What's the hardest game you've ever played? Lately, it feels like a lot of games have gotten easier, so I suspect a lot of the picks I would go for would come from the 8-bit era. I'm looking at you, Ninja Gaiden and Silver Surfer. Let me hear your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently hard at work on a bunch of reviews. We'll also be posting a fun look at Sega Visions on Wednesday, followed by a video where I talk about my half-finished articles. I promise, it's going to be a lot more exciting than it sounds. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.